not allowed out in mixed company. They are all members of the NFL Ballet Ensemble, a bizarre yet finely tuned troupe under the direction of ballet master Air Plié. Monsieur Plié has personally shaped his men for this moment, and as he unwinds on the sideline, they nervously await their cue to begin the beautiful black and blue Danube. Life as an NFL ballet aficionado has its drawbacks, sorry to say. Because indoor productions are rare, inclement weather can be a bit inconvenient for those with thin blood, and most irritating for one in charge of wardrobe. But worst of all is footing on stage. Classical ballet takes quite a beating, I'm afraid. would never approve. Still, the fellows jolly well give it their best under the circumstances. I think it's bloody disgraceful when some cheeky fans display their ignorance by pelting the poor lads with snowballs all the way to their dressing quarters.
ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much. Thank you. I am your narrator, Bruno Parfait, and over there are others who contributed, like special music editing by Jeff Earhart and voices by the Fellowship Road players with Carolyn O'Donnell. No, no, I'm not done yet. Back to the credits. Behind the scenes, we have Dick Dufresne and Art Spieler. <sighs> Associate producer Stanley Leshner spending John Mullen's money. Music department rhythm ace Phil Spieler. Director of Photography, Ernie Ernst, and number one son, Howie Neef. In charge of production, Mike Adams and his merry men and ladies, Vicky Denenberg, Doris Abelson, Paul Lerman, John Bell, Ed Dents, Tom Grafe, Bill Gray, Laura Larbar, Hank McKelvey, Jack Newman, Jack Nicholson, Don Paravati, Dave and Kathy Paul, Kenny Smith, and Jay Gerber. Over there is America's editor-in-chief, Bob Ryan, while out front is producer Steve Sable, semi-flamboyant son of the boss, Ed Sable. Big Ed keeps close watch on his son, and also the kid from Utah who wrote and directed the NFL Symphony. That's Phil Tuckett. And need I even mention what made it all possible? <laughs>